Hello, this is, uh, this is Jacob. This is uh, Sync Thing Periodic number two out of two. Uh, so now it's a series, that's nice. Um, we just released 0 0.11.25. Uh, minor bug fix fixes an issue with the, um, or minor bug fix release, fixes an issue with the free space check. I hope this is like the third attempt to get the free space check fixed. Um, and there's been various annoying fuck ups along the way. So in dot twenty four, if sync thing was going to update the modification time on a twenty five gig file, say, uh, it would assume that it would need twenty five gigs of free space to do that. And if you didn't have twenty five gigs of free space, it would stop and refuse to do the sync. And that's stupid, uh, obviously. So that check has been removed, and we've inserted something else in some other part of the code just before it tries to allocate new space. Uh, so it will be more careful about claiming you don't have space when you actually do. But on the other hand, there's a slightly higher risk that you might actually run out of disk space uh, under some circumstances. There's a trade-off. Uh, it's not perfect, it's far from foolproof. Hopefully some other time, someone smarter than me can uh, implement something that is a bit, more, a bit better and a bit more safe. But in the meantime, this, this will have to do. So that's all on the V11 front. Uh, for version 12 or 0 to 12, that's soon to be upcoming. Um, there's been some nice hacking going on the past week. Audius has filed a uh, an initial kind of preview pull request for his temporary indexes stuff, which looks really nice and it's much less invasive and scary than I thought it would be. Uh, so that makes me happy. It's much nicer to review them. Um, so temporary indexes uh, and normal indexes first maybe. So when sync thing talks to other devices it needs to tell them about what files it has available. This is done via exchanging indexes. Um, but as it is currently sync thing will only tell other devices about files when it has the whole file. Uh, that's simple and it makes sense because that's the point where it knows that the file has succeeded and that all the hashes are correct and, and everything right. Uh, so that's fine, except for the case where you have a cluster and you're trying to synchronize, for example, a, share, a change the virtual machine image. So that's a large file, it will take a lot of time to sync. And during, for example, a device that has grabbed, say, half of uh, the 20 gig file, it won't actually give access to that first half of the file to the other devices. Not yet, because it hasn't announced it. With the temporary indexes stuff, Sync thing will periodically send updates to other devices informing them that it has parts of the file that might be interesting. And thus the cluster can actually balance traffic uh, a little bit better and we should see a lot smarter uh, bandwidth utilization when uh, syncing large files within a cluster. So, so that's pretty cool uh, and it's coming. In the meantime, I've been working on, the, uh, on, on revamping the discovery system. So we needed to do some changes to it anyway, uh, to support the relaying thing that's already gone in. But um, there, there are some other things I wanted to change. So th there's basically two families of discovery in sync thing. There's the, there's the local discovery, which is just UDP packets, broadcasts, multicast for IPv6, on the, on the local network, telling other devices in the vicinity that here I am, this is my device ID, I'm running sync thing, and then I can connect. I haven't changed that mechanism at all. There's no need to. It works fine. The code's been cleaned up a little bit. I've made it a little bit more robust, maybe fixed some, some corner case bugs, but it, it, it's generally the same. Then there's the, um, the global discovery, which is where the device talks to a server out on the internet and basically tells it that, again, same, same mechanism there so far. Uh, this is my device ID, I'm at this IP number, and other devices can, can then look that up and, and reach me. So the disadvantage of the current system there is that these UDP packets that are sent to the global discovery server are often blocked by corporate firewalls. And if that's the case, then even if you could connect to some other device, you won't be able to find them. Uh, so that, that's kind of annoying, right? Uh, there's also the case that, or it's also the case that these packets just contain the device ID and a port number and that's it. There's, there's no authentication in any direction. So I could potentially impersonate 
some other device ID and kind of make global discovery for them and their peers uh, work less reliably. It's not a huge deal, but it's, it's, it's kind of suboptimal. So what I'm redoing, when I'm redoing it now, the discovery will instead, instead use TLX, TLS or HTTPS, normal TCP connection over port uh, 443, like any secure browser connection. So this has the advantage that it's usually permitted through firewalls, that's neat. Uh, and also it adds some, some security to the mix, right? Because both the server and the client can now authenticate each other via certificates. So the client knows that it's talking to the discovery server it thinks it's talking to. The discovery server doesn't need to trust the device ID of the other side. It, can, it kind of implicitly gets to see the device ID by the presented certificate. And queries from the uh, client to the server are encrypted, so an eavesdropper can't really see what devices I'm asking for. So that's kind of nice. Uh, it's, it's more secure, but I think the main thing is that it gets, gets through firewalls better. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion actually on the, um, on the forum about uh, Discovery this past week and how since it's centralized, it's vulnerable to certain attacks. For example, you could take down the current global discovery server by DDoS attacking my hosting, uh, which would be really annoying for me and somewhat annoying for, for other users out there. Uh, we could make this the, the current system geographically distributed. Uh, I mean, SyncThing knows how to talk to multiple discovery servers and it does so by default, one for v4 and one for v6. So adding more of them out there is it's just very simple. It's just a configuration change, basically. Um, so, so that's one thing. But in general, looking at, for example, the anonymous usage reports we get, most users uh, have clusters consisting of three devices or less. So these are devices controlled by yourself, I'm guessing, in, in, in most cases. I mean, it, it sounds like it's a computer and a NAS and a phone, for example. So assuming that the discovery server is down for a day, you might find a different way to connect these. You can, since you control them yourself, right? You can change them to using uh, local discovery or DNS or static IPs for that matter. And if they were already connected, then it's no big deal at all. You won't even notice that the discovery server goes down. So it's an issue and we could resolve it in, in various ways. Uh, there's of course always the option of moving to a distributed hash table kind of setup. Uh, we might get there at some point. So. The, the other kind of concern people have around the, uh, around the discovery server is that there's too much information in the centralized point. And I can kind of sympathize with that. Um, the thing is, what if I turn evil uh, or if an evil person uh, hacks the discovery server? So they get access to mappings between device IDs and IPs. To me, that's not really sensitive information by itself. Yes, you get a, number, you get a list of IP addresses of people using SyncThing. But using sync thing isn't, it's usually not illegal, um, but you know, it, it's not super sensitive. If you monitor the traffic to and from the discovery server, then you would gain information about which devices are talking to each other, because you'd see which devices are doing lookups uh, for which other devices and so on, right? So that makes, that makes it possible for me to map out the clusters. So I could see, for example, that, okay, here's a cluster of three devices and it's in Sweden. But I still don't get to know who is behind it. And I don't know anything about the content being exchanged and so on, right? So I can see that there's a concern, but I don't think it's super serious. I might be missing some, some detail in, in what the actual attack is here. Uh, and I'm sure there will be more discussion about it. So that will be made clear at that point, probably. Um, also, moving to a distributed hash table, as has been suggested, uh, would put, put all this information out in the open. Uh, I mean, it, it's out there, it's distributed, it's, it's there for anyone to query, uh, map, data mine, lie about, and so on, right? So that wouldn't necessarily be a solution to that problem. Um, so the discovery changes uh, I'm doing, they've, they, there's a pull request on GitHub, it's not done yet. Uh, I've got about 200 awesome comments from, uh, from Audius about things that I should fix and, and do in a smarter way. Uh, so I'll fix that in time uh, and it's, uh, it's going to be merged. So that'll be nice. Uh, 
so again, I mean, the end game here is that a device behind a um, uh, behind a corporate firewall. As long as you can connect outwards on HTTPS, you'll be able to talk to the discovery and you'll be able to talk to the relays. And that way you'll be able to talk to whatever other sync thing devices exist out there. Um, so that should solve a whole bunch of issues with uh, people not getting their devices to connect. And I think it's going to be really nifty. So I'm kind of excited to see what kind of reception that gets and how it actually works in reality when we do when we do the uh, 0.12 release, which is hopefully not that long um, far away. Yeah, that'll be nifty. Um, I think that's, that's all for this week. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, follow up in the forum and uh, feedback there and so on, discussions. And uh, I'll see you next week, hopefully. Thank you.